Hey Fran here at New Testament Explained. This video today is going to run through Old Testament expectations of the Messiah and then finish off with a little bit looking at what uh, people expected the Messiah to be like as a result. Uh, as always, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. So before we start looking at Old Testament passages, what we're going to do is explore the term Messiah a little bit. Now the word Messiah means anointed one and Jewish kings were anointed with oil, which suggests that the Messiah is sort of a Jewish king. However, as we'll see as this video progresses, people had different interpretations as to what the Messiah would be like. Now, in terms of where people got their understanding of what the Messiah would be like, um, they looked to the Old Testament. And in particular, you've got 18 books, uh, the books of prophecy, that get their name from the fact they are believed to have been written by prophets. And what these books do is outline what the Messiah will be like. So the next few slides are going to go over passages that appear in these books. And then we're going to finish off by looking at what people thought the Messiah would be like. So I'm going to start running through uh, passages that appear in the Old Testament and what they suggest about expectations concerning the Messiah. Now, as I'm going through these, you in your head might be deciding whether Jesus meets these expectations or not. Um, you're entirely right to do this. However, for the purpose of this video, I will just be running through what the expectations are. Um, so expectation one is that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Uh, and to support that, we've got Judges 5-2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small amongst the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, from ancient times. So then we've got the second expectation that the Messiah would descend from the line of King David. Uh, we are going to do an entire video on King David and the importance of him as an individual. Um, but the expectation comes from Jeremiah 33, 15. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch spout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. The third expectation is that the Messiah would unite all nations and gather those exiled from Israel. Isaiah 11 verse 12 states, He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people from, of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. And then we also have Amos 9 verses 14 to 15 that read, And I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will re rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. Expectation four is that the Messiah would be followed by men of all nations. Uh, and to support this, we've got Zechariah 8 verse 23 that states, In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, Let us go with you, because we have heard that God is with you. Expectation five is that the Messiah would bring peace and end war. And we can use two passages from Isaiah to support this. Isaiah 2, 4 states, he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. And then Isaiah 11, verse six states, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. Expectation six is that the Messiah would end death. And again, we've got two passages from Isaiah to back this expectation up. Isaiah 25 verse eight states, he will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And then Isaiah 26 verse 19 states, But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. And then the final expectation that we're going to cover is that the Messiah will bring about Christianity. Uh, and this comes from Jeremiah 31, 34. No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. 
Now that we've looked at what the Old Testament says about what the Messiah would be like, um, we're going to take a look at what people in the first century thought and what they took from these Bible passages. So we're ultimately answering the question now of, what did people think the Messiah would be like? One interpretation then is that the Messiah would be a great king. Now at this time, Palestine was under Roman occupation, which is a topic we look at in more detail in 1.2, so check that video out. And therefore, Palestine is being ruled by the descendants of Herod, as opposed to King David. What people are hoping for in that context then, is that the Romans and the publicans are driven out of the land, and that the Messiah will take over as the new king. As part of that, they're hoping the Messiah would be a warlord, especially the zealots, they're hoping for a more sort of, um, almost like violent imagery of what the Messiah would be like. Uh, some are hoping for a supernatural king who would defeat demons. Um, so even within this one concept, again, we've got variations of what the Messiah will be like in terms of uh, how he acts and what he does. A second interpretation is that they will get a priestly Messiah. Um, and this comes from the context of the temple in Jerusalem. Um, which was considered corrupt, especially in terms of the people working inside the temple. Um, for example, Jews pay taxes to bring animals uh, for sacrifice. So some Jews look at temple practice, look at the actions of those who work in the temple and are hoping for a Messiah who would reform the priesthood. Um, some would go so far as to say to destroy the temple in Jerusalem. Again, even within this interpretation, there are different uh, opinions about exactly what the Messiah would do. Um, and in terms of groups in first century Palestine, the Essenes are the group um, who would hurt for this Messiah more so. A third point of view um, is that the Messiah would be a prophet, the prophetic Messiah. Um, the age of prophets, it seemed to be over in the first century, um, but there are Jews in the first century who are hoping for a great prophet. Uh, who would bring them back to God. Uh, and looking in the Old Testament, if you're familiar with the story of Moses, he had promised to send another prophet. So there are people in, in the first century who are hoping for this individual to come down to earth. This view is more popular with ordinary people and with the Pharisees. Finally, we've not only just got a more controversial idea, but we've got an interpretation that we're going to look at for an entire video. And this is the idea that the Messiah would be a suffering servant. Um, this is an interpretation based on Isaiah 53, and it's the idea that the Messiah will die an atoning death, and the atoning death will make up for the sins of others. Now, the Interpretation is based on an Old Testament text, but a question we have to ask ourselves, and again, we'll look at this in more detail in the Suffering Servant video, is whether people in the first century, prior to Jesus being born and prior to his ministry, whether people were expecting the Messiah to be this individual, the Suffering Servant. So this video has outlined what the Old Testament says concerning the Messiah and what the Messiah would be like, and then the latter half just looked in a little bit of detail at what people in the first century were expecting. And the answer to that is different things. Thank you for watching this video. And as always, make sure you are subscribed if you are not already.